Academica Media. You are listening to Charter School Superstars, bringing you the voices of an education revolution. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Ryan Carella from Academica Media. Our guest this week on the program is the Senior Vice President at Vector Solutions, a provider of safety training platforms and resources for the education industry. He is an award-winning public health professional who specializes in leveraging social and behavioral science to solve the most pressing challenges facing campuses, companies, and communities. You can find out more about our guest's work by visiting www.vectorsolutions.com. We are happy to welcome Rob Bulo onto Charter School Superstars. Hey, Rob. Hey, Ryan, it's great to be here today. Great to have you here. Love chatting with the folks from Vector Solutions. You guys are really working on some cutting edge stuff in school safety and in safety training. And obviously, with the start of the school year, that stuff is on the top of mind of every administrator I talk to. And so us talking right now is uh, perfect in terms of timing. Let's start off with just learning a little bit about you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what makes you very passionate about the work you're doing around creating safer, healthier schools. Well, Ryan, you teed it up nicely with the introduction as a public health professional. And I always like to start with drawing the distinction between public health and medicine, because a lot of people tend to think about those things the same, but medicine is about treating individuals after they become sick or injured, whereas public health is about keeping populations of people from being harmed to begin with and doing that at scale. So yeah, you know, people think about, okay, you can, you can treat someone for cancer or cardiovascular disease downstream, but wouldn't it be great if we go upstream and think about smoking cessation programs or eating healthy? And similarly, you know, how do we teach people to just engage in respectful ways with each other? That's really about public health and mitigating all the future effects of harms by preventing them out of the gates. And so to the scale piece, so there's one thing to prevent harms and another to do it at a massive scale. Vector's working with over 4,000 K-12 districts and schools, including over 60 of the top 100 largest districts in the country. We're also with over half of all colleges and universities in higher education. And I share that, and I'm sure your learners can relate. Education, the system of schools is such a powerful place for impacting lives and communities. I mean, a school could be the one place where a student gets a hot meal or has someone they can talk to or learns how to just interact respectfully with other people. And so I love getting up every day and working in a job where I can support the teachers and administrators who are really entrusted with the care and development of all of our young people. I definitely share your fascination with the interaction and often the uh, the symbiotic relationship between education and public health and the way that these two different studies can can support each other. And I think that there's I was also intrigued by your statement about one of the distinctions between medicine and public health is that medicine is often treating the disease or the malady that exists in that moment, whereas public health is a lot more about being proactive, prevention, preventing cancer, not by treating the cancer, but by stopping smoking in the first place. And so I feel like a lot of what we do in the school safety space is, uh, is you know, kind of informs this distinction of being reactive versus proactive. Uh, in in a school safety, we're often reactive, right? We pass laws in reaction to some kind of tragedy that happens on a school uh, campus, such as a school shooting. But what I'm hearing more and more is we want as trying to advance a movement towards being proactive in school safety, stopping these incidents before they even start. And I know that's something that you're passionate about. So for the folks out there who work in education, what are the some of the things that we should be doing in our schools to get ahead of these issues, to stop these school safety problems before they start? Gosh, Ryan, I, I, I love this question. And I'll, I'll start with saying that there is an important place for those reactive or responsive measures and how we're addressing school safety. But we really have to be thinking about a spectrum of initiatives that starts with how to get ahead of them and keep harm from happening to begin with. But you talked about the example of 
you know, active assailant situations in schools, we absolutely need to be equipping students. And it's really unfortunate that we're in this situation to have to do this, but equipping students and administrators with the ability to intervene effectively in those situations. And it's not always as acute as a school shooting situation, but a bullying situation. What do you do when you see something? How do you actually say something in that situation to stop that from happening? And then of course, there's those response initiatives, the way that you adjudicate against someone who has committed harms, the way that you create policies to keep something from happening again. But I would say that the, the greatest return on investment is when you don't have to deal with all the harm afterwards because you were effective at the front end and keeping it from happening. And so Vector, as an organization, I mean, we have been on a journey in this space where we really started with an emphasis on responding to critical incidents with our safe schools technology and training that many teachers will be familiar with. But we've certainly expanded to address that broader context and climate and, and culture around safety and well-being. So, you know, for students, that really does bring to mind social and emotional learning and how we're teaching them the skills to, you know, be inclusive and create a culture of belonging in schools and sort of navigate across differences and have healthy dialogues, how they stay well in terms of their mental health and cope with loneliness or stress or anxiety, which we know kids are dealing with in really exacerbated ways right now. Of course, I talked about bullying and healthy relationships. You know, really, and it comes to the educators though, where, where they need support resources and, and the ability to create space to talk about these difficult topics, but then also how to mitigate risks in potentially harmful situations, how to actively respond to safety and security threats, how to assess potential threats. And the last thing I'll, I'll note here is when we talk about safety issues and issues of harm or well-being, you know, we tend to pathologize these issues and, and think about how we stop students who are part of the problem. But I think a much more powerful way to frame our thinking is how do we engage our community as part of the solution? Because when you actually look at the data, most students aren't actively engaging in bullying or acts of discrimination. And you know, by and large, school shooting incidents are still rare, albeit once is too many, of course. But when you think about the healthy majority of the students that exist in our communities, we have to be leveraging those students that want to have healthy relationships to create sort of a culture of respect in the schools. And the great news is we've got such a, a captive audience of, of, of champions in our young people that can create that sort of social norm that treating someone with disrespect or engaging in harmful behaviors just isn't acceptable in our schools. We should really be leveraging our healthy, positive-minded students. I definitely found myself intrigued when you were talking about the role that teachers can play in this, because with, I would say pretty much any initiative you want to make happen in K-12, whether it's school safety, public health, or just increasing academic outcomes or anything, you have to make sure that your teachers have the resources and preparation they need, because ultimately, whatever the initiative it is, the teachers are delivering it because they are the ones that are with the students most often. They're the ones that have the relationships with the students. When most students think of the school environment, the teacher is the first person they think of. And so if we're talking about prevention in the school safety space, um, I can't help but think that we have to make sure that teachers are prepared and have the resources required to be able to have discussions with students about things like bullying and stress, anxiety, ha healthy relationships. So how do we get teachers those resources so that they feel comfortable and they feel prepared having those very important discussions? Before I answer that, Ron, I just, I want to tip my hat to all of the teachers out there. Y'all are just the champions and the, the boots on the ground change makers for, for right young on. people. You really are the linchpin for that, that potential for education to change the trajectory of a person's life. Um, 
So having said that, uh, you know, there's some research in higher education, for example, that having a mentor, a trusted administrator who cares about you and demonstrates an interest in your well-being is strongly and significantly connected to a student's persistence and whether or not they're going to complete their degree. And I think we can probably extrapolate that as being similar in K-12 schools where teachers have to be able to create space to have human first conversations because that's going to build trust in a student being able to open up and communicate about the things that they might be struggling with and might be happening amongst their friends. And, you know, of course that <clears throat> starts with compassionate and active listening. And it means that we have to take into consideration sort of the whole student perspective where we are thinking about the the complex identities and experiences that make every single student unique. But I'll also note that, you know, having the space for these conversations, you know, we're talking about a world where young people live and interact here. And so just having those conversations is a great way to model how to have effective interpersonal communication. Those just aren't skills that are being built all the time with young people. Uh, and so being able to have those opportunities to practice those skills with teachers is really important. And gosh, you know, Ryan, the amount of things that fall onto the plate of teachers. I was just thinking that as you were mentioning this. <laughs> is just extraordinary, the pressures that they face. And so there are so many things that teachers are, are experts on and a lot that they are responsible for. And they just might not have had training on how to talk about these sensitive, complex issues of safety, of well-being, of, of inclusion. So absolutely, we have to, at the district and school level, be leaning on the good educational programs that are out there for teachers and administrators to support them, as well as for students, um, so that it's not solely falling on the shoulders of our teachers. Uh, and those student trainings can be really helpful in establishing a baseline of, of awareness and skills and even just language for how to talk about these various issues that are happening in the schools. And a good educational program should also then have some follow-up materials or wraparound resources that are going to tell a teacher, hey, here's what the student's learning in this program. Here's some questions that you can talk to them about after going through that program. And hopefully a good program is going to kind of level up a student's ability to have a discussion about those questions. And here's some things that you can do to build on whatever positive change happened in your community so that you don't sort of slip back to the way things were. Um, so there's a huge a huge set of resources out there to help educate teachers and students. Um, and then of course, just continuing to help teachers have the ability to escalate and get support when things go beyond their capacity to control. Well, when I think about learning resources in this area, I've always been a big fan of the resources that Vector has put together and has continued to put together uh, in this area. And I understand that Vector Solutions recently released a new set of courses to include some of these topics that kind of relate to what we've been talking about, topics like active assailant preparedness, trauma, dating violence, and human trafficking. Can you tell us a little bit more about these updated courses and what motivated you to put them together? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, <laughs> as I pulled my phone out earlier and talked about social media and text messaging, we live in the age of of YouTube and TikTok and Snapchat and Instagram. And so new challenges can emerge in an instant. And, and all of a sudden, teachers need to be prepared <laughs> to take these challenges on. Uh, but also, you know, existing issues, what you talked about around active assailants or dating violence or human trafficking, those aren't new issues. But sometimes they can evolve or gain more urgency or have new best practices come out. And so, you know, at Vector, our responsibility is keeping our finger on the pulse of new and evolving threats to the well-being of our students in schools and sort of translating that into technology solutions and tools that can help institutions 
address these really critical needs. And so that new student learning library, uh, these, these sorts of programs complement our existing staff trainings on these same topics uh, around our active assailant, trauma, dating, violence. We've got staff, administrators, teachers learning about these issues. We have to be addressing it on the student side as well. And it kind of fits with the all the other student programs that we've got around bullying, around depression and stress and anxiety and suicide prevention. You can't disentangle these issues. They're so interconnected. And so, you know, when I think about a topic like dating violence, for example, in, in high schools, you, you got to have that staff training to identify the warning signs for teachers to be able to provide support in these situations. But that's not going to solve the challenge of how a student treats another student in an intimate relationship, right? Like we have to be talking to students themselves about healthy behaviors, about consent, around how to communicate expectations when you're dating a person, how to intervene when you see somebody treating their partner disrespectfully, uh, how to seek support or provide support if you or your friend are struggling with some of these challenges. Uh, it's just so important that we have these conversations on, on both the employee, admin, teacher side, as well as the student side, but also that, you know, you don't, you don't start talking about an issue like dating violence in, in high school. It starts with hands are not for hitting programs in K-12 and then bullying prevention programs and then getting into healthy relationships. And then they go to college and they learn about sexual assault prevention. And then they're in the workforce and they're thinking about harassment. Like as a society, that's how we've got to be thinking about addressing these challenges, not sort of single point in time interventions, but really as sort of a life course approach. And gosh, there's no better place than a school to start early and just have a huge lifelong impact on how people develop. Well, it gets back to what we said before about how at the you know school is often the place where so much positive change can happen. We talked about how the interaction between schools and public health. Well, I think any sort of social change or just making society better, it all starts in the school and it starts with great resources. You can find out more about our guests' courses and our guests' work by visiting www.vectorsolutions.com. Rob Bulo is joining us. Rob, this has been a real treat. I'm learning so much, and I know our viewers and listeners are too. We appreciate your time. Before we let you go, though, one last question that we love to ask our guests around here. If with the snap of your fingers, you could make any change to the education system, what change would it be? It has to be more resources and more investment in the education system. It, you're, you're talking about the great equalizer, right? It is, it is a system that can catalyze community impact and, and change the trajectory of people's lives, but it's not equitable right now. And not everyone can realize those same outcomes and have the same degree of access. And even in some of our most well-resourced institutions, we're still struggling with capacity to go above and beyond what it requires to just meet common core standards and really like embrace the fact that we are, we're helping whole people, not just sort of fostering knowledge in their brains, but helping them just grow into to healthy adults that can be healthy members of their community that can truly change the world. And, and I, I have to say, you know, this, this notion of, of, of resources and investment makes me think about that line at the end of waiting for Superman, where it, it talks about all of the inequities in the education system. And it really closes with this powerful punch of, you know, we're not going to see a change in the education system until we have more parents caring about other parents' kids. And so that's the call to all of the members of our community is you know, we are in this together. And what is good for the student in the district next door is ultimately going to be good for your kids as well and the communities that, that they're going to go off into and continue to change. And so uh, more resources to support the incredible, incredible work that our teachers are doing out there. Right on. Excellent. Thank you so much for your insight, Rob. And uh, thank you for all the great work that you do in education. Thanks for having me, Ryan.
And thank you all for listening to Charter School Superstars. expressed on the preceding program have been those of the hosts and guests and do not necessarily reflect the views of Academica, its clients, staff, affiliates, or advertisers.